Okay, so this is going to be another one of those lectures that's in two parts. Um, I never effectively pause this. So if we look on page 284, um, I think that's where I am. Oh, yeah, 285. So uh, the ant appears, uh, Frank's aunt with whom he lives. She's really a piece of work. Um, yes, upon my word, very considerable. 65 miles further than Maple Grove to London. What? I've lost my place. Um, oh, yeah, th th this is um, Frank's aunt, Mrs. Mrs. Churchill. Uh, I thought this was a, just a funny line on the bottom of page 285. She always travels with her own sheets, an excellent precaution. Isn't that funny? I wonder if bed bugs were a problem at the time. So then you would bring your own sheets. Depend on it. Mrs. Churchill does everything that any other fine lady ever did. Mrs. Churchill will not be second to any lady in the land. Um, yeah, she's another one that is really stuck on position. 286. Mrs. Churchill is not much good and not much in my good graces. Um... Uh, but Mrs. Elton, but I have not much faith in Mrs. Churchill's illness. So um, this is another one who is way focused on her health. Um, down at the bottom of page 286, this was too loud a call for a compliment to be passed by. And Mr. Weston, with, a good, with very good grace, immediately exclaimed, My dear madam, nobody but yourself could imagine such a thing. Remember that the protocol at the time was that one only, it, one took every opportunity, men particularly, took every opportunity to praise women. That was what was expected. And he does that right there. So he has done his duty and could return to his son. He has praised her, and now he can return to the subject of his son, uh, who is indeed coming back. At the end of the first paragraph on page 287, I ob have observed, Mrs. Elton, in the course of my life, that if things are going untowardly one month, they are sure to mend the next. I think that's a really good um, character revelation of Mr. Weston. He's, um, I suppose, the opposite of John Knightley. He's the opposite of a curmudgeon. He is ever the optimist. And at the bottom of page 288, at the end of the paragraph, here's Mrs. Um, M Mrs. Churchill. These characters are so hilarious. Um, but her pride is arrogance and insolence. And what inclines one less to bear, she has no fair pretense of family or blood. She was nobody when she married her, barely the daughter of a gentleman. But ever since her being turned into a Churchill, she has called, she has out Churchill them all in high and mighty claims. But in herself, I assure you, she is an upstart. Isn't that interesting? Everybody knows everybody's heritage. Um, she, so she's a newcomer. Even though she has, um, she frequently makes remarks about Mr. Suckley. Um, she meaning um, Mrs. Elton. She's an upstart. She's a newcomer. And so is Mrs. Churchill. If we look at the, oh yeah, look at 291. And I've got another note here, 267. This is back in the dummies book. Um, Austin uses Mrs. Elton, the former Augusta Hawkins, for at least four reasons. By marrying Augusta Hawkins soon after being rejected by Emma, Mr. Elton shows that he really wasn't in love with Emma. Here, Emma was right in assuming that if she could get Mrs. Miss Woodhouse with her 30,000 pounds, he would go after Miss somebody, anybody, with 20,000 pounds or 10,000, and he gets 10. Another reason we have Mrs. Elton, she has the fancy name Augusta, derived from the Latin word August, meaning grand or sacred. Then she has the ordinary surname Hawkins, 
suggesting that she hawks or is hawking or advertising in a loud way that hawkers should. One second. Stop it. Everybody's barking. Okay. Next. Mrs. Elton is an exaggerated version of Emma's egoism and desire to control others. Isn't that interesting? She swoops like a hawk into Highbury, fastens her, her claws into poor Jane Fairfax, and runs her life despite Jane's awkward protests. What, did, what Emma did to Harriet Smith, Mrs. Elton is doing to Jane. And Emma uh, Augusta Hawken Elton comes from Bristol, a thriving commercial port connected to the slave, slave trade. When Jane Fairfax connects being a governess to being a slave, Austin wants you to remember that Mrs. Elton, who's busy trying to get her into a family as a governess, is in fact dealing in the sale of Jane Fairfax. Curious, isn't it? So now let's go back to the text. I'm just trying to get to where we're supposed to be, which, oh, it's only a few more pages. Okay, so then we begin volume three, um, and volume three begins two months later after what we've just seen. Um, first paragraph, if a separation of two months should not have cooled him, there were dangers and evils before her. Caution for her, for him and for herself would be necessary. She's still thinking that he's after, that Frank is after Emma. And so she cautions herself um, at the bottom of page, I don't know what page that is, uh, 295. Um, but as he came from Randall's immediately to Hartfield, she could then exercise all her quick observation and speedily determine how he was influenced and how she must act. End of this paragraph. She watched him well. It was a clear thing he was less in love than he had been. Absence, with the conviction probably of her indifference, had produced this very natural and very desirable effect. Um, what she's not understanding is that he never was in love with her. She's always trying to spin it and try to encourage um, her own ideas. There's a clue in the next paragraph, however. Um, he was in high spirits, as ready to talk and laugh as ever, and seemed delighted to speak of his former visit and recur to old stories, and he was not without agitation. He's agitated. He was not calm. His spirits were evidently fluttered. There was a restlessness about him. End of the next paragraph. Um, and she was rather inclined to think it implied a dread of her returning power and a discreet resolution of not trusting himself with her long. Isn't that curious? End of the next paragraph. At the bottom of this page, she was really ill and, oh, that she was really ill and was very certain he had declared himself convinced of it. This is of Mrs. Churchill, the, the aunt. Um, though uh, much might be fancy, he could not doubt when he looked back that that she was in a weaker state of health than she had been a half a year ago. He did not believe it to proceed from anything that care and medicine might not remove, at least that she might not have as many years of existence before her. But she could not be prevailed on by all his father's doubts to say that her complaints were merely imaginary or that she was as strong as ever. So <laughs> Austin fuels that for us. Um, she has nerves, and she speaks of going to Richmond. Um, I don't know if, if, if some of you probably have been to this area of um, of outside London. There was a college there called Richmond College, um, and I studied there for a while. Outside of London, it was really very beautiful and hilly and one of those old um, medieval-looking type buildings. So... On the next page, the ball returns. Mr. Weston's ball was to be a real thing. A very few, uh, a very few tomorrows stood between the young people of Highbury and happiness. So, another hint: it, it's for the young people. The young people are able to flirt with each other at these balls. So, uh, with that, I'm 
it's been going on, I'm pretty sure, for nearly two hours. So, uh, but I wanted to get to where we need to be today. Um, so, again, there are two lectures. One is only 10 minutes long, and then the other one is hmm, probably an hour and a half or so. Um, sorry about that. Have a good week, and I will talk to you next week.